Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in a prior video, we took a look at this Wild Garter Owler One Night Vision Binocular. At this point and to date on my channel, this is still my number one go-to and just highest quality, best performing nighttime infrared optic. And I've tested a bunch of these at this point. But here today, we're gonna look at the NR1 which is also a fantastic offering from Wild Garter. Now, I'm not going to say this is a monocular because I do tend to use this with two eyes, but at the same time, it is more on that monocular and I would say sort of scope-driven adapter. This is really, really a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of equipment. And so at this point, I've been playing with this, I've been testing it, I've been using it in a number of different scenarios. So what we're going to do, I have a two-part series that I really need to do with this. It covers two vastly different genres. First and foremost, here on my Outer Limitless main channel, we're going to take a look at this as a general purpose tool. It's really, in essence, night vision, but it has a great scope capability camera recording capability, audio recording capability, fairly compact, all things considered, and is just extremely versatile. So if you're looking for some security, if you're looking for night vision, if you're looking to really view and observe nature fairly close up, this will do a fantastic job. And then on Outer Limitless 2, we're going to convert this as a rifle scope adapter. We're going to get this to the range. We're going to test it in detail and show how this really is an enhancement to a firearm system. But again, when we come back, we're going to take a look at this in detail, and then we're going to get it out for some field use. So with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Wild Garter who did provide this for review. And so now as we get into the NR1, here you can see it side by side with the Owler one. Now, if you have not seen my video on the Owler one, I do strongly suggest it. Some really great footage and mind-blowing the capability of this unit. And I mention that most specifically because as you take a look at it here, well, now we have, and again, not really so much a monocular, even though it looks like it, but a monocular or scope version that's not quite as capable, but I would say it gets you very close in a fairly compact unit. So very comparable in terms of what they're trying to accomplish, but even furthermore, with some additional advancements, additional features. This NR1 is impressive. And so as we get into detail, a few things. First off, you can see the box here. Very nicely done. Fairly simple in terms of the packaging. Now this comes with a ton of stuff. We need to be just a little bit careful here because this is going to mix and match with what I'm going to cover on Outer Limitless 2. So a lot of what you see here does take this from what would be otherwise call it your like outdoors or utility product to more of a firearms driven product. So here you can see your operating instructions, good amount of instructions here. Uh, does leave you a little bit lacking, but this does enough to get you started and get you moving in the right direction. You end up with a battery charger, then a number of just a couple dozen accessories across the board here. So a lot of little things, just little adapters, scope adapters, O-rings, some different things. For example, you end up with a battery tube, so you can swap out the battery in this. It does have a rechargeable lithium ion battery right inside, comes with it. Very nice, and we'll get into detail, but it also comes with an adapter in case you need to swap out your batteries cleaning cloth, carrying strap, a number of things, your charging cable here, a couple of tools, some hardware, and of all things, a DVD that I'm probably never ever going to use, but there is a DVD with some instructions here, which, I don't know, I've managed to figure things out to this point and not need it. But again here, the NR1. 
Now this does come in a case, and I did want to take a quick minute to talk about this. Nice case, plenty of storage, has this really nice divider here, which is neoprene, and I love that because it keeps your accessories separate from the unit itself. So this was very nicely done, and as you look at the inside, kind of form fit. Now this is, in my opinion, a double-edged sword. It's nice that it's form fit, but at the same time, I personally do, for these types of units, like to run it on a tripod. So here you can see the shoe from my tripod head. And as I try to get this in the case, it does fit, but if you had something very large or really not meant to fit in here, it would struggle. And you can see I made it work. I've sort of stretched this just a little bit to get this in here, but it is very form fit, fairly tight, and made to orient a very specific way. As we look at the construction, very straightforward, extremely well done. That's the first thing. I like the construction. It's plastic, but it's fairly heavy duty plastic. This does not feel cheap by any means. It's well made. It feels stout and all the controls also feeling stout. So as you take a look here on the front, this is your zoom ring. So this does have a wide zoom range, which is phenomenal. You're gonna hear me talk about that again and again and again. The zoom range on this is literally phenomenal. And then on top of that, this is your focus adjustment ring. And you pretty much have, in essence, infinite adjustability on the focus, which is ridiculous. You do not get this quality out of all of these optics units. So to be here on the NR1, is really what sets this apart from the competition. Here you have your power button, pretty straightforward, mode button, pretty straightforward, and then the rest of your controls on the side. So these buttons do sort of play a multiple role depending on what you're trying to do. In the middle, a record button, you end up with sort of a plus and minus, which sort of adjusts different things, like for example, your digital zoom. It can also help to operate your menus, it can also help to adjust your infrared levels. And then you have a left and right button, which again, help you navigate through different modes, set different settings. It's very functional and seems to work very well. Now I will caveat that by saying the small button in the middle is the record button, which you use to start and stop your video recordings and take photographs. I kind of wish that button was in a different spot for me. I personally would like the top button here maybe to be the record. It would be a lot more convenient versus on the side, but I have gotten used to this over time. As we take a look at the front here, you can see this is your objective lens. Nice lens, all things considered, very useful. And it does have an adapter again to allow this to go onto firearms optics. But here, this is some of the magic. This has two different infrared emitters. First off, you have your 850 emitter, so your 850 nanometer emitter. This is, and I'm not gonna say completely invisible by any means, it does emit a little bit of a red light. That is the thing, but it's going to be the more powerful of the two emitters. So for longer range, for brighter values, that's gonna be your 850. Then here, you have the 940 emitter. Now that's gonna be less visible, basically invisible to the naked eye, no red light showing, and that's gonna be much more stealth. It's not gonna be as powerful, it's not gonna beam off as far, but much more stealth. And at that, you'll notice that these do have adjustment focus rings. So you can take this beam and you can actually focus it off into the distance and it has just a little bit of play where you can actually adjust this from left to right or up to down. I don't know if they intended on that, but it is something I found becomes very important and useful. And that is the case for both emitters. So very interesting the way this was done and it's very effective. Here you can see this does have your battery compartment. So as we unthread this here, very straightforward, but a nice battery. As you take a look at this here, just a beautiful 21700 lithium ion battery, 3.7 volt, 4800 milliamp hour battery. Nicely done so far, seems to work very well. And I found that two things, you can charge it with the charger here, or I have just simply left it in the unit and plugged it in via USB and it does seem to charge it. So that's awesome. I love the fact that you can kind of get the battery in here, 
set it and forget it. And as you take a look here, you'll notice this does have a USB port underneath this dust cover. So that has worked well. It is a micro USB, comes with the cable, just plug it into a power brick and you're good to go. This also does come with an SD card. So inside there, an SD card, that's what all your recordings go to. And then you have a couple of different connectors. So for example, I believe that's an HDMI, so like a small HDMI cable, and then an audio cable, which would allow you to, in theory, run video and audio out of this if you wanted to display it something along those lines so very cool now there are a couple of things that i haven't quite made full sense of yet like for example these little sections of rail i believe are weaver rail i don't think they're picatinny i think these are weaver i've been trying to experiment with this to figure out how to get different mounts on here uh, but at this point i haven't been completely successful but i believe these are like weaver mounts and then a couple other things on the bottom this is threaded to allow you to adapt this to a number of different things. As you see, I've put my plate for my tripod on here. Now, keep in mind that this is now at this point with the way this is mounted in the vertical orientation. I struggle with that for a couple of reasons. For me, as a video and content creator, I tend to like horizontally opposed video content. This is, as you look inside, typically in the horizontal orientation. However, when you go to the shooting modes, it does become what I'd say more vertical. Uh, but at that, it really does want to lend itself to either button up in the horizontal or button up in the vertical orientation. And I would love the ability to get an additional adapter here so that when I run this horizontally, it's a little easier to use. I have been able to make this happen in the vertical orientation and then canting my entire tripod head to the side. Now a long press here does turn this on. As you look, you'll see this whole thing does come alive. And as you get a quick look, you can see here down onto the countertop here, really interesting where you'll notice my hands are in perfect focus. This does have the ability to focus literally infinitely, which is phenomenal. Now this button here is interesting, a long press, and pretty much what that's doing is emitting a laser. As you take a look here, this does have a laser right here on top. Now that's pretty much gonna be mostly useful when you get into the firearms application. You might have a reason for it, I just don't see it being necessary for the general user. And to me, that's kind of a waste of an important button, which is why I was saying I would have really preferred for this to be a record button. But other than that, a single press, this does go through the different modes. So as I press here, you can see from video mode to photo to playback. Pretty straightforward, but that's pretty much all that does. And then here on the side buttons, a long press, and that does go into your menu. So as you take a look here, you'll see a very nice menu. I love the way this menu is laid out and it's extremely easy to navigate through. So I have made some adjustments within the menu to get everything really established the way that I want it. Now this menu does become a little more interactive as you use this for more of the firearms application. But again, I'll cover that in a different video. Now, remember I was saying this is not necessarily really like, I don't know, it's a scope, but it's not necessarily a monocular. Even though it looks like it, I do tend to look through this with two eyes and not just one. And the reason why I say that is because when you look through with just one eye, it can be very disorienting. Imagine having just this large screen in one eye and then your other eye not having the brightness of that device. It can be real disorienting, especially at nighttime. So for me, I did find I tend to look through this with two eyes and that works a little bit better. But the other thing you can do, and I have not done this, is remove these screws. So these two screws here and these two screws here, and this does come with the tool to do this. And if you look at how big this would be, cutting off this entire section, this becomes extremely compact. I mean, very, very small. And as I take a look at it here, I mean, measuring out, it really ends up being, call it one, two, three, four, four and a half inches by maybe one, two, three, 
four inches. So I mean, I'll call it a four by four square. I mean, very, very compact. And now at this point, taking a general overview and looking at the general construction, let's get this out for some field use. Okay. So little test here, recording. I'm gonna start bringing everything into focus. Hopefully the audio on this is fairly clear. I can tell you definitely every time I touch these devices, the microphone picks up my movements. So that's one thing worth considering now. Obviously a bright morning. You can see here, nice picture. Now one of the things I've been playing with is my ability to really zoom in and get everything nice and tight. So we're gonna get a little detail right here on this tree. Now this is daytime, not using any of the nighttime features of course. The zoom here, let's test this out. So first and foremost, this is as wide as it goes. And now zooming in, you kind of need to try to keep yourself oriented because this is a manual focus. But as I continue to work my way in, that there is full optical zoom, which is sweet. And so you're getting a sense of the audio that comes off of the actual device. Sometimes it can be a little bit tinny. It'll be interesting to see how this sounds. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. Now that was all optical zoom, but you can also leverage digital zoom. And so as I zoom into the picture here, you'll notice that I am able to get pretty tight, all things considered. Kind of looking at that that node in the tree and fine tuning my focus here. It can be a little sensitive, but that's a good thing. You can get this really dialed in if you take your time. And I think that's about right. Now the other thing I can say is you definitely want to leverage a tripod when you use a device like this. It can be disorienting. It can be tough to get everything manipulated. So the tripod's definitely going to be key. Now one thing you'll notice is how I have this mounted right now. I do want this in the horizontal position. You can run this horizontal or vertical. And because I'm filming for a TV and you know typical screens for my channel, right now I want this horizontal so that the picture is horizontal. Now there are other times when vertical would make sense, but one of my limitations is the mounting capability. You'll notice that the tripod mount here is on the bottom when it's in the vertical position, and I don't have any real true effective way right now to mount this more appropriately up onto the actual tripod head. So I'm making it work. It's just a little unorthodox, but you can do it. And as you look here real quick, giving you an idea of what this looks like through the actual screen. I mean, very nice. I love this. The screen is beautiful. A nice large eyepiece, very easy. And as you look a little closer, again, you can see very clear. A nice image, very, very clear. No problem, that is awesome. I like this quite a bit. So hitting record here, I'm gonna show you the granularity in the focus. So here you can see directly in front of me, there is some you know, little pine trees, but way off in the distance, a nice clump of trees. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom all the way into that. And as I get myself all the way in, now this is not digital zoom. This is only optical zoom for now. But you can see, rocking the optical zoom and getting this into good detail. But as I continue to move, I can lean on that focus and dial it in to trees that are directly in front of me. And this tree here is literally directly in front of me and even more so as I look at the ground below my feet look at the detail in these leaves all of these leaves directly below my feet and I'll take this a step further which now my 
finger is directly in front of the lens and you can make out my fingerprints. That's crazy. The overall optics range of this is mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing and I love it. And so I wanted to continue to experiment with the overall capabilities of the NR1. So you can see here, actually using it in the indoor scenario, this had a shocking range. Again, the ability to get really tight up to really see some details. So not only can you use this as like a scope, but you can almost use it. And I'm certainly not going to say like a microscope, but you can see here, it's actually able to zoom in over a width of approximately one half of an inch. So very, very effective. But getting this back outdoors again, well, I wanted to test this in a little bit of sort of a spotting scope scenario. So I thought I'd watch a little bit of soccer. I was at my son's game, just trying to test this out overall. Now I did find that it was a little bit limited because this is a manual focus. You really need to be fast on the focus and the fact that the zoom range is capable, yet at the same time you have to zoom, you have to focus all at once, really means that the most effective way to use this is kind of set the actual zoom to where you think it's gonna be reasonable for your needs, and then that way you can just kind of worry about the focus as you go. Now you will notice that there are a few little artifacts. At times there's some ghosting, the color can be a little bit washed out, but for the most part, I do have to say, this performed very well, and keep in mind the fact that my user's experience is just a little bit different from the actual recorded footage. My user experience was a little bit better than what you're seeing here from the recorded footage. But for something like sports, where it's fairly fast paced, as long as you have a tripod and the ability to move it from left to right and really keep it from what I would say fixed in the vertical position, it actually leaves you in a fairly reasonable position to be able to do this. And overall, the quality is there, the ability to zoom in on the action is definitely there. And I have to say for the sports, for the most part, pretty effective. Is it perfect? No, but it does do a mighty nice job, all things considered. So the NR1, I would say, is a viable option for watching sports at a little bit of distance if you think that's something you would be interested in. So overall, pretty cool. So here, taking a look at the moon, this is fully zoomed out. Now this is a crescent moon. But as you can see here, a little bit of flare, a little hard to distinguish, zooming in. Now here with optical zoom, so no digital zoom, this is full optical zoom. You can clearly see the crescent and then the outline of the rest of the moon. So very cool. Now going to digital zoom, again you can see that crescent moon. And at this point, eh, you can kind of see it moving as the tripod is still. The camera is still. You can very slightly see the moon moving through the frame. It's subtle, but it's there. Long pressing now into the infrared mode. This definitely doesn't have much to add to this. Dialing in the focus really doesn't add much. You're actually better off without it. Now directly in the middle of the screen, here you can see a bright star right in the middle. Pretty close to the middle anyway and not a ton in the way of really stars worth noting. However, I'm either seeing a lot of noise in this image or actual twinkling stars, and it's hard to say which. There's definitely a lot more in the screen than what I can see with my naked eye. And as I pan around, now I'm panning the actual scope around quite a bit, and I am seeing all the same noise. So I'm really gaining absolutely nothing with the scope over the naked eye. Now again with that star right in the middle of the screen, long press, infrared mode, gains me nothing. Literally nothing at all. Adding to the intensity level, that's where this really makes a difference. And that's going to be where you have imagery in the foreground. That's when this really will make a difference. Now you can see here in my backyard, off into the trees and the neighbor behind me. You can see here 
as I'm able to dial in the infrared beam, it goes extremely tight and widens out. Now as I cycle through the infrared modes, here you can see that is off. Single press, this is going to be the low mode on the 960 nanometers. Another long press, that's going to be the high mode for the 960 nanometers. Another press, this is now in the 840 nanometers low, medium, and high intensity. And in each case, I do have the ability to refine that beam. So if I want to zoom into that beam, I can do so. So now zooming into the beam, adjusting my focus. And now you can see as I pan around, Pretty good in terms of the overall clarity and my ability to see my subject. Not bad. So barely enough light to see. Without the infrared mode here, you can see I'm struggling to find my focus. And that is an indication that my user experience is a little bit limited here. I mean, I can certainly make out those geese, but Finding my focus is a little bit tough. Now this is a time of night when things definitely get difficult. But trying to tweak that in there. That's pretty good. Now this is fully optical zoom. And optical zoom only. But now getting on the digital zoom. You can see a good amount of noise. And that's the theoretical limit here. Can't really go too much further than that. Stepping into the infrared modes here, so this is simply black and white, no real IR emitter, so to speak. Just fine tuning the focus there. Not great, but not terrible. And that does an okay job. And as I back off here, there you go. You can see the cars on the roadway up above reflecting off the water. And here's our scene fully zoomed out. Now you can see those geese in the water, middle of the screen, way off in the distance. So that gives you an indication. And of course, now you can see the cars coming through the trees. Focus definitely taking a little bit to get adjusted, but you can see a nice mirror image on the water there. And again, this is black and white. And here in color, that gives you an indication of what the user's experience looks like. It is pretty good, but at the same time, just a little bit grainy, but a nice scene nonetheless. Now with the tripod locked into place, we're gonna go through the different infrared modes. So again, here's black and white. Single click here. This is the 940 illuminator. And you can see focusing that beam in and out. Now I got this in focus to the best of my ability, but I'm gonna zoom into the infrared beam. So again, you can see that beam tightening it down. And now as I zoom into it, again, that is the 940 and the low power. And there you can see moving the illuminator around. Now a second press. That's 940 in the high mode. Now again, fine tuning that beam. I can dial it down or widen it out. So dialing that down, getting on my focus now. That's about the best I can do. So we're just gonna search around a little bit. Oh, you can see birdhouse in the water. Looking further off, nice mirror image. Reflecting off the trees there. Down into the water. But I don't have a lot in the way of detail in the water itself. I kind of lose it off into the distance. As I zoom this all the way out, now you can see, here's the full scene and widening out the beam. You can see you do kind of lose it here. 
So the 940 is going to be a little bit limited. But for the 850, again, another press of the button. This is 850 in the low mode. Tightening down that beam, you can see much brighter and more intense. So the 850, even though you're going to see it with your eyes, is going to be more effective at distance. And now zooming into the beam, you can see that birdhouse. Now keep in mind this is low, medium, and high modes. And panning around, you can definitely see off into the distance much better. Not great, but definitely further off. And widening out now, that's your full width scene. Couple last images here. Again, this is on the 850, and this is a little more up close, but fairly decent detail. And as we zoom in, you can see the reflections off of the wall of the abutment. The ripples in the water, that's the reflection off to the shoreline. Not too bad. Again, a little bit limited, but if there was something over there moving, we'd be able to identify it. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A preliminary look at this Wild Garter NR1. Fantastic. Just really, really cool. An effective piece of equipment. And there is so much more to this than what I would cover in today's video. Just very, very in-depth, tons of settings, tons of ability, capability, and you just got a glimpse. Now, keep in mind a couple of things. First off, the recorded footage that you see is exactly that. It's the recorded footage. It's not necessarily my user's experience while I'm looking through this, while I'm looking through the screen, through the lens, playing with the different you know knobs and features, getting this dialed in, that experience is completely different from the footage that you see. The footage is just a general representation. And so I would say that overall, my user's experience is even better than the footage that you see. Now, there are a few things. I did find that sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get on these dials because of the way this had to be mounted. I'm like reaching around my tripod pod. I'm kind of trying to work around it. I would really love the ability to more effectively mount this for the horizontal orientation. I am looking for adapters right now that will do that. I have found a few. They're crazy expensive. And so I'm just trying to find the right solution. I think it can be done, but that's something that I'm working on. And so a simple solution would be just as easy to tap this for a tripod adapter, but that's for another version, hopefully in the future. Other than that, I mean, very effective. The overall focus range is mind boggling. Again, you don't get that with other units. So the fact that this is so flexible in terms of the focus, extremely, extremely effective. And the overall optical zoom range is awesome as well. So the idea being that you just get those nice optics, the optical zoom and taking advantage of glass and lenses, that really does put this on top. And so my overall user's experience was phenomenal with this. I can say I greatly enjoy this. And this is just the first look. I am gonna go through this in complete detail and try to get this set up for the firearms application. And so with that, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. I have a ton of videos up there. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, take a look at Outer Limitless 2. And so again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Wild Garter who did provide this for review. This is, again, just really cool. So much, much more to come. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.